In this section, we're going to use a tool that's called PHP My Admin, and it's used to um, deal with a MySQL database. So we can create tables, we can create databases, pretty much do anything to do with a database. So if you went along in the last chapter, section two, and created the environment um, for PHP, which included XAMPP, then you should already have this installed. So if you want to click on your XAMPP icon, um, which is the control panel, you just want to make sure that MySQL is running. So if it's running, it'll say stop. All right, so now if we go to our browser and type in localhost slash PHP my admin, you should get this login screen. And in that section of the last chapter, we I showed you how to change or add a password to your database. So you want to plug that in now. And if you didn't do that, then just leave the password field blank and it should let you in. All right, so this is the interface. These on the left, left hand side, we have all the databases that are on the system. Uh, these are just sample or stock databases that come with PHP My Admin. Uh, we want to actually click on the database tab and we want to create a new database. And I'm going to call this database company. This is going to be just a database for a fictional company. And you can see it was now added on the left. So if we click on that, it takes us to that database and we have no tables. Okay, so we can have tables like um, employees, products, uh, and then in those tables we can have fields. Um, let's say like product ID is a field and then we can insert data into those fields. So let's create some tables. Uh, the first table I want to create is employees and it's asking us for the number of columns we want or for the number of fields and I'm just gonna say five and we can add or subtract as we go so the first thing we want to do is when you create a table most of the time you want it to have an ID and that's gonna be the first field and the type of this field is gonna be integer so we're gonna leave it at INT and the length this isn't mandatory for an integer, but I usually put 11. Um, if you think of a number that has 11 values, uh, that's a pretty big number. Chances are you won't go over that. And then we need to scroll over here because for the ID, we need to do two things. We need to set its index to primary because this is gonna be the basic uh, field that we, can, we identify our employees with. And we also want to check AI, which stands for auto increment. And what that means is that if we insert a record into our database and we don't need to provide the ID, the ID will automatically be promoted to the next ID, to the next number available. So if we have three, um, if we have three values or three uh, database fields, I'm sorry, values, and we put in a fourth, but we don't specify the ID of four, it'll automatically go to four. All right, so that's very important. Uh, the next thing that I wanna, I wanna have in our employees table is a first name. And I like to format my names, all lowercase, with underscores for spaces. So first name, and this is going to be a varcar. And a varcar is, is a common type. Um, it's pretty much anything uh, that you want, any characters, numbers, letters, symbols, it can be anything. Um, and we're gonna put a length of 255. That's the common, that's the norm when you're dealing with varcars. So I don't think we're gonna have a first name that's more than 255 letters long. Uh, and that's all we have to do. We don't need to make it AI or primary or anything like that. Um, we only do that with the primary key, which is usually ID. So let's put a last name. Same thing. We want Varkar, and that can be 255. Um, the next thing I want is a department. And same thing, Varkar. And finally, we want an email address, and that's going to be the same. 
All right, so now our employees table will have an ID, first, last name, department, and email. So we wanna just click save. And now you can see we have our employees table. If we click on it, we can click on structure and we can see all the fields that we have available. All right, so next thing I wanna do is create another table and I wanna call this products. And we'll say five again. Okay, actually we don't need all five, but that's fine. Uh, so we want an ID for our products, and we'll say 11 for the values, the length, and we also want primary and AI. And then next we want the name of the product, which can be a bar car, and then we want the category. And the category is actually gonna be, we're gonna have a foreign key, because we're gonna have a categories table. So this is gonna stay at int, and we'll say 11. Whoop, we don't want that, we wanna press save. Okay, so we wanna create one more table called categories. Uh, let me see, and we just want two columns for our categories. All we need is an ID and a name. So ID's int, we'll say 11, it's gonna be AI, primary, okay, and the name will be Varkar 255. All right, so this is our database. It has no data in it, it's just a structure right now. So there's a few different ways we can actually populate this database um, without PHP, without anything, just using PHP my admin. So the first would be, let's click on employees. We could actually click on insert and we can use this, these nice forms to insert data. So let's just give it a, let's give it a first name, Kevin, uh, Jones, department, we'll say design, email, we'll say kj at gmail.com. Now, typically when you're doing this, you don't want to include an ID because like I said, it's auto increment. It's gonna be, it's gonna give us the right value automatically without us trying to mess with it. So if we click go, it says one row inserted. If we go to browse, we're browsing our employees table. You can see we have one, we have Kevin Jones, he's in design and we have his email address. So that's an easy way to insert data using PHP my admin. Now obviously this isn't optimal. You're not going to want to log into to PHP my admin to add employees to your program. Um, eventually you're going to want a PHP script where you can log in and add them. Um, but to do that we need to create queries and we can actually run queries inside of PHP my admin. Um, if we click on company so we're at the main database and then click on SQL. We can run any queries we want into here. So the first thing I want to show you is an insert query. So this will insert data. So if you remember from the PowerPoint, we want to do insert into, and then we want the table name, which is employees. And then we need some parentheses. And this will hold the names of the fields. So first name, last name, department, and email. All right. So then we need the values keyword and then some more parentheses. And we can actually put in whatever we want. Let's say, um, and we want to do this with quotes. Okay, quotes around each string. So Fred will be the first name, comma, quote, um, say Thompson, comma, quote. Uh, we'll put him in design as well. And then his email, we'll just say Fred at yahoo.com, quote. All right, so this should run, hopefully. We just click go. All right, so it says one row inserted. So if we go to our company database, our employees table, if we click browse, you can
can see we now have Fred Thompson in our table. So okay, so that's a, a simple insert SQ, uh, sorry query. Now we just inserted one one value. We inserted one employee. We can do multiple as well. So let's say in actually let me just paste that in. Now what we need to do here is we can keep this top line. Okay, so we're inserting into employees and then all the fields and then values and then we want to copy this, the parent everything, the parentheses and everything in it and just paste them like this. And now actually let me make this a little bigger. And now all we have to change is the values. So we'll say um, Bob Smith. He can be in, let's say, programming. We'll just change his email. Okay, let's say Sarah White. And she can be in marketing. All right. So we'll do Tim Silver. He can be in programming as well. Okay. And one more. We'll say Leah Leah Thompson. Well, she's um Yeah, Leah Thompson. She can be in marketing as well. All right. So now we have four new new uh, rows that we want to insert. So I'm going to click go. Let me make this smaller again. Okay, click go. All right, so we have an error and it seems to be near Sarah White. So let's look down here. Sarah White. Make sure everything is syntactically. Oh, I'm sorry. We need commas after each after each person, all right? So we want a comma there, there, and there. So that should work. Go. All right, so it says it inserted the tables, um, or the rows, I'm sorry. So if we go to browse, you can see now we have a bunch of employees. Now, what if we want to change something? If we want to change something, we need to use the update query. All right, so let's look at someone here. Let's look at Bob Smith. His ID is three. No one else has the ID of three. So that's what we want to use to change something. Let's say that he moved to marketing from programming. So we need to change that. He also wants a new email address. Uh, and his new e email address will be Bob Smith at Yahoo. So let's go over to the SQL um, form. And what we want to do is an update query. We want to say update employees. Actually, we want to click on company and then SQL. Update employees. Uh, we want to set. We want to set um, department to where we say we're going to move him to marketing. Okay, and then a comma. So department is marketing. We want to change his email to bobsmith at yahoo.com. And then, and most importantly, we need to have the where clause. We're going to say where ID is equal to three. All right copy that. Let's try that out. So it says one row affected. If we go to our employees table and look at Bob, he's now in marketing and his email address is now Bob Smith at Yahoo. So that's how you would update um, a row. Now we've done insert and update. 
what about when we want to just display the data on our website or wherever uh, then we need to use a select query so let's go to SQL and let's just do something easy we'll say select all from employees and what it will do is actually give us a table down here with the criteria that we're looking for so we selected all so that means it returned the entire table um, we can say select first name comma last name from employees click go and you can see it gives us only the first name and last name okay let's do a couple more uh, let's actually insert some products so let's say insert into products um, and then we want the name let's see we want the name and the category and the category is going to be an ID number of a category in the categories table which we haven't added any data to yet so I'm just gonna say uh, for values I want let's say um, I don't know iPod and the category will be one Okay, so go up oh, iPod needs to have a quote needs to have quotes around it so if we go to company products you can see we have iPod with category of one now I'm gonna go to the categories table and I'm gonna just insert real quick instead of doing a query the category um, ID is going to be one because it's auto increment and I'm going to call it electronics so category two will say furniture okay so I'll click go now we have a categories table which has two categories electronics and furniture so that's why I made the product of the iPod category one because it's an electronic. Now you're not going to have to do this. Once we create a PHP script, it'll automatically do this. It'll automatically associate the products category field with the category table. All right. And we can do that with something called join. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, but first I just want to show you how we can um, get more intra have more interesting select queries so let's do this let's say select um, we'll select all from employees where department equals marketing try that out so this gives us all the employees that are in marketing okay so we can also use um, things like and and or so we can say select let's do select all from employees where now when I when I uppercase this where and the select and from that's not needed but it's just good to get in the habit of that because that's the typical syntax um, we're going to say where department equals design or um, department equals programming Okay, so we can use or here, we can use the double ampersand for and as well. All right, so now we have everybody from the design and programming department. All right, so now I want to show you a delete query. So if we go to our employees, 
let's say that Tim is getting fired, so we need to get rid of him. So we can see that his ID is five. So let's go to company SQL and we'll say delete from employees where ID is equal to five. So delete queries are actually really simple. All right, so if we go back to our employees, we can see that Tim is no longer with us and ID five is gone. So it's not like Lee is gonna become five because Tim's gone. It's just that ID is just gone. So it's gonna, the next ID will be seven and so on. So let's go back to products. And I'm just gonna insert another product. Um, let's say, I don't know, home audio system. And that's gonna be in category one. And let's say Sony PS3 is also in one. So we have three products. Let's insert one furniture. So insert, let's say, end table. That's going to be in two. And let's say, leather couch, which will be also a furniture product. Okay, so now, what if, what if I want to select all products that are in the category of electronics. To do that, we need to use what's called a join. And let's go to our SQL window or form. And we wanna say select, select that we want the product name and the category name. And the problem with that is that in our products table, we don't have the category name, we just have the ID, which points to the name on the categories table. So we want products.name. We want the name of from the products table. And we also want categories.name, all right? Now, since categories and product both have the field name, this will get, it'll get confused. So what we need to do is we're gonna select categories.name as category, all right? Because like I said, products and category table both have name. So instead we're gonna select categories.name as category. So we're gonna select this from products. And I like to do this, just the spacing out, it just looks neater. And what we're gonna do is a left join of the table categories. And we want to use the on keyword, because this is where we're gonna match up the products and categories. It's gonna be products dot category. And that's gonna match the categories table ID, okay? So let me open this in a new window. So categories, we have, I'm sorry, products, we have a name and a category number, all right? So we can't get the category name from this table. We need to join in this table so we can get the category name. So that would be electronics, furniture, all right? And what we're doing with the on statement we're saying on products category equals categories ID. We're matching up products in products. It's the, the category has the category heading. On the categories table, it has the ID heading. So this ID matches up with the category, all right? So let's run this and see what happens. So now we have this table that has the product name with the category name. Okay, so it's what it's doing is joining two tables together to give us the result that we're asking for. And I know that's probably a little hard to understand. I know it was for me when I was learning this stuff, um, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to do. 
and to just wrap your, your head around. So um, that's it for this section. Um, next we'll be actually doing this stuff through PHP as opposed to just using the PHP MyAdmin tool.